Hi, my name is Michael and I'm a welding specialist at Mikatronic. Today I'm going to show you how to use our Automic 300 Pulse. We are going to set the machine up for aluminum weld. We are going to use the function double pulse. I'm going to show you how to set up the machine, what's important when we are talking about welding with aluminum. And I'm going to show you some practical weld task with uh, an overlap joint or lap joints or a Tesla model where we use it as a backing. So why do we need to weld in aluminum? First of all, it reduces the fuel consumption, it increases the performance of all the cars, and of course it reduces the weight, that's all the purpose by using the aluminum. It has the weight of a third of compared to steel, so also it has better mechanical properties because it has a better stiffness, and of course, the most important thing is collision safety. Now I'm going to show you how to set up the machine for aluminum. There are several important things you need to know. First of all, in this case we have a triple machine, so you don't need to change the wire every time. It's set up for mild steel, Cousy, that means mixed bracing, and the last one is aluminum. It's only for small diameters of the spools. What's important is, if we take a look at the different colors we have. We have the rollers, they come in white, blue and red, and some other colors. The white ones are for diameters of the wire for 0.8, blue ones 1 millimeter, red ones 1.2. And for aluminum, I prefer to use 1.2 diameter of the, the wire. They come in different shapes. You can see it on the back side. It comes in V-shape, U-shape. There is an arrow that points to what it is. Very important to use U-shapes on our rollers. Next thing is that when we take a look at the hoses, we have different opportunities or solutions to the liners. In this case, I use a PE liner. It has a gasket, plastic gasket or rubber gasket that has to make sure that there is no gas leaks when you start to weld. The length of course has to be fit to the hose and at the end of this one it comes with a bronze spiral or in this case with a ceramic and it has the purpose of taking the heat when you start to weld. If it's too short it starts to melt and that's not a good idea. In the machine, we have an inch function knob. So when you have taken the wire through the system and into the hose, you can just press here. And if we take a look at the end, it's a very good idea to take off the contact tip so that when the wire is coming through the liner and through the swan neck, it doesn't have any resistance whatsoever. Make sure the hose is in a straight line. You press the inch and then eventually it will come out. And then you just take your contact tip back on. And then you have to squeeze it a little bit so it don't get loose when you want to start to weld. Cut it approximately from 10 millimeter from the end of the contact tip to the start point. Back with the gas cup, and then you're almost ready to start to weld. Next thing is very important also. How fast do these have to point on the wire? Make sure when you start, press the torch, and then you should be able to hold back the wire with a certain amount of resistance. If you cannot do that, you have to loosen But if they are too loose, it's too easy to hold back, then you have to tighten a little bit. Make sure you do it equal on both tighteners. In this case, we have a four-wheel roll. That means it really takes a grip on the wire. So now this is set, we can close it. And then we need to check the machine to set up the machine for the type of wire, the size of the wire and the gas combination. 
I will now guide you through how to set up the machine for a specific task. Remember, if you have more than one torch on the machine, in this case we have three, so you can see it up here. Remember, if you have more than one torch on the machine, you have to dedicate each torch to a specific wire and gas combination. You can see up here which torch you are dealing with right now. First, we press the program chooser. Then we have to decide which type of material we have. In this case, we have aluminum, alloys, ticket, choose the dimension on the wire, tick, and then we have to decide which gas. Standard gas, argon, is the normal one. And then we have to decide what type of alloy do we have on the wire. In this case, we have a very soft wire, LC5 or ER4043. If you choose a wrong program, you may experience that it weld like sh You don't have to say that. Now the machine has found the right program. We can see up here that we have a 1.2 aluminum, argon and an LC wire. We can see the graphic panel, we can see the amps down here, we can see voltage up here. We have a default setting of voltage, that means if we are welding with 46 amps, our voltage are 16.5, which matches if you're welding in a 1.5 millimeter plate. Out here we have pulse on off, in this case for welding aluminum I choose pulse. And then, of course, I have to weld a task for double pulse. That means we are pulsing on the wire also. So we also select this one. We can see arc adjust is green. That means I have changed something in the arc adjust. Try a default setting at 0, 0.0. If that works for you, okay. If you think it gets a little bit hot, you have to go a bit in minus. So the penetration won't be visible on the back side of the plates. If you think you need more heat, but you cannot do something about the voltage, you go in plus, then you get a little bit more heat into material. In this case, I use minus 0.5, accept it. And when you have found some very good settings, you have five memory functions for each torch. So that means in this case, when you start to weld and you find these are very good settings for a specific job, you can just press memory function. You can press, you can see there are already five used, but you can press one you don't need. And then you have to store it and accept it. So now you can see that the changes to green out here. And if you press again, we can see number two is with the settings we have on the screen right now. Now I have set up the machine for aluminum, and in this case it's a 4043 wire, which means it's an LC5 wire, a quite soft wire. So now I'm going to demonstrate a different task, two tasks, a lab joint, and uh, what we call a Tesla test. That means we have a form of a backing on the back side of the plates. Now I have done two welds, that means I have welded with pulse and also with double pulse. And the settings and the value for double pulse was free. If we take a look at the first one, that was the lap joint in 1.5 mil. It appears to look okay on the front side here. Looks very nice, good transition to both plates. But if we take a look on the back side, we can see that somewhere because maybe lack of speed or the settings was wrong, I got some penetration on the backside. And that's not allowed when we talk about tests uh, like this. So that means you have to speed up a little bit the process, or maybe you have to turn down a little bit on the amperage, or maybe do something about the arc adjust. You can go a little bit further in minus then. So we have different ways of getting to a perfect weld. That was the lap joint. 
If we take a look at the Tesla model, we have a very smooth, well, good transition to both materials and on the back side, it has a very, very good ideal look. No penetration whatsoever. So this is a perfect world. And this is also made with pulse and also the setting three, the value on our double pulse. So now I'm going to show you how to set up the different parameters on double pulse if you want to get a ticker-like appearance. So let me show you. If you want to change the double pulse, the value of it, I welded with uh, the value three, but if you decide you want to have a ticker-like appearance, you can go into our menu down here, and then you go to the tag function up here, step tag, press, and then you see the symbol again. You see, I was welding with value number three. I get a certain amount of pattern in my weld. If you like to have a ticker-like appearance, you can choose a higher value. Our default setting is 10, so it gets a bit harder. So that means you, maybe you have to have a thicker material or speed up the process if that's uh, what you want. Or if you want to have a colder weld and gain some speed, you can choose a lower value. Choose yourself what you like, accept it, and then when you start to weld, for instance, with 100 amps, you get 25% more on the first sequence and then 25 less on the second. So that means it switches 50 amps. So now you have seen what's important when we're talking about aluminum weld. We have seen how to set up the machine, the whole system with the wire, and also how to set up the machine. And we have seen double pulse, how good it is, and what's important when to weld aluminum. So with these words, thank you and goodbye.